Hi there, boys and girls. Here's another Bible story adventure. <laughs> Once there was a giant named Goliath. He was almost ten feet tall and so terrible that everybody was afraid of him. Now Goliath was the champion of the Philistine army that was fighting God's people. And every morning and evening for many days he came out and shouted his challenge. Hear me, you Israelites. Choose one of your men to come and fight me. If he kills me, the Philistines will be your slave. But if I kill him... You will serve us the rest of your lives. You can just imagine how scared those Israelites were. They knew they didn't have anyone that could kill Goliath. Even their king Saul didn't know what to do. But one day he heard of a young shepherd boy named David who had said he wasn't afraid of the terrible giant. So Saul sent for him right away. And when David came into the king's tent, he said... Tell the people they don't have to be afraid anymore, O king. I'll fight the giant. You, David? Why, you're only a boy. I know I'm only a shepherd lad, O king, but God will be with me. Yes, David, I know that. I remember once when I was tending my sheep, a lion came and stole one of my lambs. And you drove him away, David? No, my lord. I killed him. But even a lion is not as terrible as this giant. Once I killed a bear, too, O king. Ah, but Goliath is worse than ten bears. God saved me from the bear and the lion, and he can deliver me from this ungodly Philistine, too. Your trust is in God, David. I can say no more. Go fight this giant, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul put his own armor on David and gave him a sword, but David refused to take them. And you know what he did? He went down to a little brook and picked up five stones. And then, with his shepherd's rod and a sling and those five little stones, that brave shepherd boy went out to fight the giant Philistine. Now, the giant was well protected. He had his brass armor on from head to foot, and he carried a spear that was big enough for two men instead of one. So you can just imagine what he thought when he saw who was coming to fight him. A boy who didn't even have a sword. He stood in front of his cheering army and cried out, Am I a god that you should come to fight me with a stick? I'll chop your head off and feed your body to the bird. You come with a sword, Goliath. But I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. I defy the God of Israel. Today he will deliver you into my hand. I'll slay you and cut off your head. You! <laughs> A shepherd boy! You talk of killing the lion! <laughs> All the earth will know this day that there is a God in Israel. Who is God? I am the lion. You'll learn who God is. Why, I'll kill you. Oh, your body for the peace. I'm not afraid, even if you are a giant. And I'm not alone. The Lord is with me. Then the big giant raised his awful spear and started toward David. He was so heavy, the whole earth seemed to shake with every step he took. Closer and closer and closer he came. David waited. He knew the giant could kill him with one blow. But he trusted God to protect him, and he put a stone in his sling and threw it with all his might. It hit the giant right in the head. He fell to the ground with a terrible crash. And before he could get to his feet, David rushed over to him, took his own big sword, and cut off his head. David was able to kill the giant and win the victory for the Israelites that day, not because he was so strong or wise, but because he trusted in God. King Saul was very happy because David had saved his people, and he took him to the palace to live. There David met Jonathan, the son of Saul, and they liked each other so much they promised to be friends as long as they lived. Then Saul made David the captain of his armies, and soon the people loved him more than they loved Saul, their king. That made Saul very jealous. And then one day Jonathan came to David and said, 
I've come to warn you, David. Warn me? Your life is in danger. My father has vowed to kill you. Jonathan, what have I done that Saul should be so angry with me? I don't know, David. But I heard him tell his plan to kill you. Then I will hide until his anger is over. And I'll talk to my father and see if he won't be to you as he was before. So Jonathan went to Saul and reminded him of all the good things David had done. Saul remembered, and to show David that he was sorry, he invited him back to the palace to play his harp. David was happy to know that Saul was still his friend, but when he got to the palace and started to play, Saul suddenly became very angry again, and he took his spear and threw it at David with all his might. Now when Saul threw his spear, God was with David and it missed him and went into the wall and David escaped. Before long, he saw Jonathan and said, Jonathan, what have I done to your father that he wants to kill me? He's jealous of you, David. But you are still my friend? Well, of course. Haven't we promised to be friends until we die? But your father, doesn't it matter to you that he hates me? Even that can never change our friendship. Then do something for me, Jonathan. I'll do anything you ask, David. Because you're my friend. Hear me then, Jonathan. Tomorrow is the new moon, and I should eat with the king. Yes, David. He'll be expecting you. But I'll not be there. I'm going to hide for three days. Hide? Yes, Jonathan. And I want you to watch the king and see if he misses me. Well, suppose he does, David. Let me know whether he's still angry with me. Well, you can depend on me, David. If my father plans evil against you, I'll tell you. But Saul might kill us both if he sees us together. Well, he... He won't, David. How can you be so sure? Well, here's my plan. You hide in the field for three days, and then go down to the stone Ezale. And wait for a message? Yes. I'll bring you word. But how? Listen carefully. I'll come to the stone Ezale and shoot three arrows. Yes. Then I'll send a boy to pick them up. If I say to him, the arrows are beyond you, flee for your life, David. That will mean that Saul still wants to kill me? Yes. But if I say to the boy... The arrows are on this side of you. Then you'll know that Saul will not hurt you. So David hid in the field, and Jonathan went back to the palace. And the next night when the king sat down to eat, he didn't say anything about David. But the second night he was very angry because David wasn't there. He even tried to kill his own son. But Jonathan escaped and went out to the field where David was. He shot three arrows, just like he said he would, and sent a boy to pick them up. And then he called out so David could hear, Look and see, lad. Isn't the arrow beyond you? Then Jonathan sent the boy home and met David near the rock. They promised again to be friends as long as they lived. But soon they had to say goodbye. And Jonathan went back to the palace. David kept hiding for a long time, and God protected him. But Saul and Jonathan were killed in battle. And then David, the shepherd boy who loved the Lord and was true to him, became king of Israel in Saul's place. Mm -hmm.